In my Mongo CXX tutorial series, I received a comment that asked about preventing duplicate values for a field in the database. This video will quickly cover indexes in Mongo CXX and how to use them so a collections field in the database is unique. I've opened the project in a VS Code window and this is continuing off of the second video in this Mongo CXX series. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to add these indexes. I'm going to go inside of our MongoDB handler class and I'm going to go in the constructor. Um, there's just some include configs that I need to change for VS Code. That's why we're getting these red lines, but um, we can ignore it because when it's time to compile, I'll show you that it's fine. Um, I'm going to open up this constructor. In the three lines above, we've initialized our class variables. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create an index which makes the character names unique in our database. So uh, kind of similar to what we've done down here. Uh, you can take, oops, uh, you can take this line 53, or uh, 52, sorry, um, and just paste it. We're going because we're going to use this builder variable to create kind of like a uh, document to specify the indexes. Um, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just take this line again. It's very similar to uh, what we've done in the past when it comes to creating these kind of um, BSON CXX documents. So um, what we're going to do is uh, we're just saying character name. Character, make sure you spell it correctly. Character name has a value of one. And then we're just going to finalize the document. And I'm going to copy it from down here because I don't feel like typing it. So what this does is it sets the character name to a value of one, similar to like a key value pair. And um, it just means that we're going to keep it unique. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize a variable called index options. So Mongo CXX options index, and I'll call it index options, like so. Initialize it with empty brackets. Um, and right under, I'm going to use the index options variable. And I'm going to just say dot unique and pass in true. So what's happening here is on 29 and 30, uh, we're addressing the character name field in our database. And we're saying that uh, we want to make it unique. And uh, that all comes together on this final line here, where we access the DB class variable, which we've initialized on line 27. Um, I'm passing in the collection name that we've defined as well. And I'm just going to say dot create index doc value dot view and then also passing in the index options okay let's just look over our work everything looks good um, now what I'm gonna do is I've created a uh, terminal within the VS code window you can create it wherever you want in the first terminal window because I'm gonna use two uh, I'm going to run MongoD, which just runs MongoDB in the background. And then I'm going to create a new window uh, where I'm going to type Mongo. And this will allow us to access the different databases we have with MongoDB. So also show DBs. Um, if you've been working with us in the past videos, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop learning Mongo CXX so that we can make these changes. Um, just so it's like a new database. So I'll say use learning Mongo CXX. And then what you want to type is db.drop database like this. And when you hit enter, it should drop the Mongo CXX database. And when we when we enter show DBs again, you can see that it's gone from what we had available. Cool. So I'm gonna quit uh Mongo DB like that. Keep in mind that first window is going to still have MongoDB running. I just quit the shell and um, I'm going to compile this with make run. Uh, actually, wait, no, not yet. Sorry. The last thing before I compile it is we're going to change our main around so that we can test out adding um, characters and we want to make sure that the name is unique. So we're going to add uh, one character and then we're going to add another character with the same name and we should receive an error by doing that. So. Uh, we're going to leave this though, so I'm going to comment this out for now. 
we'll come back to it later. But um, let me include some things we need. So I'm going to include uh, MongoDB handler. And we also need uh, the instance back. So include uh, Mongo CXX forge slash uh, instance dot HPP and then um, down here after the commented out code uh, I'm gonna create a Mongo CXX instance I'll just call it instance uh, remember we need that to be defined otherwise you receive a seg fault uh, the next one is learning namespace and then Mongo DB handler uh, M handler and again um, I'm going based off of the previous videos code so um, videos one and two you know discuss creating those classes um, and then we're going to add two characters to the database so the first character we'll call it Donkey Kong like so uh, we'll give it a size of large so learning character size k large and then let's say you have 99 wins and then I'll add Donkey Kong again, but this time I'll give him one win. So when we compile this with make run, we should receive an error. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and we'll see what happens. Okay, so you can see that we got an error because uh, we added Donkey Kong once and adding it the second time gave us this error. And we can verify this by running Mongo, bring up the shell again. Um, if we do show dbs, we can see learning Mongo CXX is back. I'm using the arrow keys, by the way, to bring back old commands. I'm going to say use learning Mongo CXX. And then I'm going to do db.mariocartcharacters.find. And with this database that was just created, you can see that we added Donkey Kong. But that second add on line 20 did not work. Okay, now that we know that adding duplicate names throws an error, let's go ahead and change... The logic around a little bit more so that our server can return a 400 if a duplicate name was supplied so um, if you recall i'm gonna use the i'm gonna bring the http server class on the right side uh, if you remember on line 36 we call the function add character to db which is inside of mongodb handler on the left and uh, on line 36 on the right side you can see that we're expecting a boolean value but as we demonstrated by compiling the code earlier, we throw an error, or an error is thrown when uh, the duplicate name is supplied. So let's go ahead and preserve this functionality where we return a Boolean. And uh, I'm just gonna do so uh, right here on the right side in the add character to DB function. Um, close that. Uh, so now um, I'm gonna just wrap this in a try catch. So we're gonna try this and if the insert one fails, we'll catch the error and then, uh, you know, we, we won't have to, you know, throw that error up the stack. And VS Code is very helpful in that it's given me this, uh, you know, kind of autocomplete feature for the try catch. So I made the try there. It's opening the parentheses. Remove this because we don't need it. Um, and then the catch will be down here. So let me format this a little nicer. Indent this. Close it. Okay, cool. So... What's happening is, uh, remember we insert it and there might be a result. If there is, we want to make sure that uh, we, we get an ID. Um, otherwise, you know, return false out here. But um, I think what I'll do is we can catch the error like so. And uh, I'm going to leave it empty brackets for now because this is just demonstrating how to do it in MongoDB and, you know, error handling. If you want to follow this tutorial and build something of your own, um, you know, by all means, do whatever you want in this uh, brackets here. But what's going to happen is we'll insert something. If there is a result, we'll return whether there was an ID. Um, and if there wasn't a result or if there's an error, we'll catch it. Nothing will happen. And then we'll return false. So now back in our main, I'm going to go ahead and remove this tester code since we know this works. And save. Uh, now let's recompile with make run down here. I'm outside of the Mongo shell in the terminal down here. And I'm gonna do make run. Let me get rid of these includes as well. I don't need them anymore, so. Okay, everything looks good. Okay, so you can see that it's compiled and the server is listening on port 5000. I'm gonna open up Postman to make uh, sending a request much easier. So, um, here, 
for example, let's go to my recent requests on the right side, or left side, sorry. All right, so um, let's just do a get request right now. And uh, if you remember, we get it back in the JSON format. You can see that the characters, um, we have Donkey Kong and he has, you know, large size 99. Uh, let's go ahead and add somebody. So let's go to save, go to body. Um, and uh, when, you know, you do localhost port 5000 forward slash save and then go to body, uh, hit raw. And then you can do this kind of like text editor here for supplying whatever you want. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to send Daisy medium and let's just give her nine wins. So if I hit send right now, we get a successful response, which is good. Let's go ahead and make sure Daisy was added. Uh, yeah, so you see characters, we have Donkey Kong, and then the next one in the array, we have Daisy right here, boom. So that's good. Now let's go ahead and try to save it again with the same request. Remember, Daisy is, the name is exactly the same. And you can, say, you can see that we got a bad request. So this is expected behavior. And if I try to request again, we should get the same result. So Donkey Kong's still there, and there's Daisy. Awesome. Unique fields in Mongo CXX.